See, don't we? Yeah, so anyway, without, uh, as they say, without further ado, I'll uh, bring Dr. Don Newberry up here to uh, give us a talk.
anniversary of giving away popcorn. This was like last night before you start wondering, reckon when that was possible. <laughs> but it never came out even. This is uh, really mostly hot air. <laughs> the colonel's too moved to pop. <laughs> Jerry Kittle. That's why the 
was when Socrates lived. It's never been truer than today. So to commend you for something this monumental seems mighty weak, we ought to be beating the drums and having a parade that we still believe in young people. We're all in this together. And then we have the opportunity that your pastor presented so eloquently this morning of heaven emerging right where you are, right where we are. I want to be like the green tomato, don't you? Because as long as we're green, we grow, it's when we think we're right that we start to get rotten. Somebody the other day complained about the cost of education. I said, it is expensive. But try comparing it to the cost of ignorance. We purposely live on a little cul-de-sac in Burleson. We were the first ones there 23 years ago. Hoping that young people would move in below. The older you get, the odds are pretty good that they're all going to be young. <laughs> Sure enough, we're the oldest ones by far. And my wife and I had already said that one day when we reached these twilight years, we wanted to be able to take walks in the evening down the sidewalk, expect to have to get over to the side to let a kid on a skateboard come past. And that's essentially what's happening. We still love to give away popcorn. I'm sorry to give me only personal experiences, but they're the only kinds I've had. Last Halloween, we gave away 600 bags of popcorn to the kids and their grandparents, great-grandparents, and uncles and aunts. Now, they weren't these big, generous-sized ones. They were more like the one, oh, I mean, they were really, the, the nickel bags, we used to call them. Remember what we call them? Nickel bags of popcorn. We are all in this together. And we aren't the first generation to face adversity. Moses led the children of Israel from the land of bondage. It wasn't more like divided. That's about as biblical as I get. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we live in a world where an awful lot of people don't like who they are, don't like where they are, don't like what they're doing. That explains quite a bit, doesn't it? I was at a banquet in Kansas City the other night. They were having a Willie Nelson look-alike contest. <laughs> I mean, 50 would-be Willie Nelsons with their beard and, uh, sorry, I had to say that. Bandana, guitar, would-be Willie Nelsons. Didn't know that the real Willie Nelson was at another Coliseum and down the same night. When he finished his act, he went down to where they were having the contest, went to the side door, entered the contest, and one third. <laughs> People want to be somebody else, living somewhere else, doing something else. Oh, to be happy where we are planted, to share. part of the fence row, realizing that some of the time we need to be corner folks. Oh, there are hills and valleys, aren't there? 180 weeks ago, when COVID was just taking hold, we got a call that our oldest daughter, Principal Anna Lido, was unconscious. One hour later, or that she was gone. She was 50. School principal, pulmonary embolism. There had scriptures all over her office. I said, Julie, what are you going to do when somebody challenges you? It's out across that bridge. Want to get there? Her favorite expression was, "Grace changes everything." The greatest moment we experienced today. That her service was held was to go to her school and see little bouquets of flowers arranged by children and little notes printed in crayon to know that she made a difference. Big in 50 years. So how 
180 weeks ago, 150 weeks ago, I was making announcements at a place like this for the lecture about like this. You already know what comes next? We had a big crowd that day for the senior worship, about 300. <laughs> And my heart stopped. <coughs> and this nurse visiting on the second row had my shirt ripped off, was pumping my chest within 37 seconds. By the way, did any of you know CPR? If so, there's a chair right here. <laughs> they said I went to the to the floor, walked my floor to the one not all four steps. It's kind of the, I guess the opposite of making it. <laughs> but I'm holding on to it. Landed in our pastor's lap. They got out that machine where they restart your heart. Took them four jokes, but it worked. I got me in the hospital and I awakened. Got me in the pacemaker. Stand. I did the drug. Stand never can say it right. I wonder if you think I couldn't rhyme even until I can. But anyway. <laughs> Why? Why am I still here? Don't they all ask that sometimes? My goodness, I was 84 years old. I had only heart surgery 25 years before that. I wish I could tell you I heard bugles blowing, trombones playing, harps maybe. I saw some glorious light. All I remember is being in the most comfortable kind of pillow-like thing that you can imagine. Something soft. And being cognizant of the deep, deep, deep belief that nothing else on earth mattered. Isn't that the way we want to go one of these days? Where heaven meets everything and earth So here I am. Do you believe in angels? Yes. 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 The older we get, the more opportunities or the more chances we seem to have to find them. To hear the rustle of their wings. I mentioned two things and I'm three. That I've seen up close. And if you haven't read this book or seen this movie, do both. Do yourself a, do yourself a favor. Have you seen, read the book? Miracles from Heaven. The movie, Miracles from Heaven. This story occurred about 50 miles from here, between Alvarado and Burris. Little girl with all kinds of physical ailments and uh, the kind of disease that you can't pronounce and won't kill you, but you can't cure it, that kind of thing. They'd been to all the doctors they could go to, and, and even in Boston, and they all came to the same conclusion that she had this multisyllabic disease. She was trying to deal with it. She and her sister were up in the tree at their house. They didn't know it was a hollow tree. She fell down the core of that tree 30 feet. 30 feet. They didn't know how they could get her out of it. They were afraid the tree would collapse on her. Old tree, 60 feet tall. They lowered her rope. She fashioned it around her body and went to the surface of it. Ended in a helicopter to Cook Children's Hospital where doctors didn't know what to expect. Both and bronze, brain injury, snake bites, bugs, you know. Doctor emerged from them in the room to say, I hardly know what to say. But only a few scratches is all we can find. And more importantly, there's no evidence of her disease. You didn't say she was cured. No evidence of her disease. I interviewed the mother. Authority on this disease, he said, 
There's no sentence. A decade has passed. She's doing great. And I think it's about her senior year in high school, if not in college. I believe in answers. I live three miles from where that occurred. If I've been listening, maybe I'll refer to Russell. Angels things. You have your own story about angels. I've spoken from Colbert several times the last couple of years about believing in them. And I said, I'd like to hear any story that you have about angels. And if you don't believe in them, tell me, tell me anyway. Not once has anyone said, No, I don't. Christian people who are leaners and lean knees. I've seen some of your little bell buttons around here today. We're the Masons, for example. Hold up your hand if you're a Mason. My mother always used your cards. <laughs>
goes in and around section 228. Each of us has a section. Each of us has a section. Each of us has a savior. God bless you and thank you for it.